Hi, Michelle here, and today I want to go over something. I'll try to make it quick, even though it's kind of a big topic, but it's something I'm really excited about showing you because I had a really tough time finding this information online. And I know if I'm searching for it, there's got to be other people out there searching for the same kind of thing. So what this video is about is about using your Copic airbrush system with more kinds of markers than just Copic. I got this at Dick Blick several years ago, a WADA, this Awada air compressor, one eighth horsepower, zero maintenance, oilless piston motor, working pressure from one to 40 PSI. Okay, um, you can get something like this. If you're just gonna do the kind of thing I'm gonna show you today, you know, I don't think you need a $300 air compressor, $200 air compressor uh, to do this. And anyway, we look up Harbor Freight Tools and they have an Awada, or not Awada, but an air compressor that I'm telling you it looks just like this thing. It doesn't have the stickers that say Awada or SmartJet, but it looks just like this and I'm sure it's got the same kind of power. And um, I think when it's on sale, it's about $60. I'm not gonna get into all of this regulator stuff. I mean, we're talking about blowing air across the, the surface of a marker right now, okay? So I don't have to get into that too much. I'm not doing like, uh, big time artwork. I'm just doing some, I'm just doing art journaling, card making, spraying some clay stuff, um, you know, just little decorative things. So it's, it's you know, I, I don't need top of the line everything, even though I think some of this might be, you know, it's not a bad product. <laughs> it just wasn't cheap. So anyway, there's different um, connectors here. But I think it came with these different adapters. This came with, I th it comes with this little, probably five A's. It's pretty standard, whatever it is. If you're using one of these little tiny um, kind of desktop air compressors. Now, if you're using a compressor that you have, your husband has in the garage or something, um, for one thing, I'm not sure if it would work with this little thing. I'm not sure. So let's get to the comparison. This, first, let's start with the Copic Original. That is square shaped. You're just gonna snap it right into that trigger. I don't know why I'm struggling with it so much there. And you can just start spraying. I think it does a little better if you spray. Sometimes you can adjust the way it's spraying by whether you lift your paper more vertical, upright. It's not necessary though. If you don't like the way the finish you're getting with that, you can just pop it out and pop it back in or give it a little tiny bit of a twist inside of the trigger and that will alter the way the, you know, how much ink is near the air flow. So now I'm taking a post-it note, one of those ones that is sticky all the way across the back except for a little tiny little edge. It's really good for masking and making little stencils and stuff and it doesn't leave any residue on your paper because it's post-it adhesive. So here I'm making a mask and then on the other, I'm just using the other part to, if you want to do it gently, you can, you know, go, you just go in the general vicinity of where you want to spray. If you want it to be a, a uh, darker, harsher, more intense color, then you're going to spray directly on. So there it is from the bullet tip and then here it is from the chisel tip. That's the color. Copic Putty number YG91 is that color. I really like that color. It's kind of a tan khaki color. Yep. And until I got this airbrush sprayer, it was the very first, only one Copic I ever bought, just because I like the color. So there's a Copic, and I'm flipping it over to show you on the scribbled section how it leaks through the paper, and on the airbrush section um, how much less ink you're using, or how much less it... Um, seeps through the paper or is wicked into the paper. Here I'm drawing it on. I'm not, I'm trying to go lightly, but um, so I'm not trying to get it to seep down in there. I'm really doing it pretty lightly. But it's just hard to get that same soft, soft effect without the airbrush. And then I think I flip it over here. So you can see that it seeps through much more. So that's a pretty good sign to me that it's uh, seeping through that it's using more ink when you actually put the pen to paper. So 
So this color is a Copic, this is a Copic sketch. And in that one, you're gonna put the chisel tip, not the brush tip. It has a chisel tip and um, this color is BG13 and it's called mint green. And now I'm going over it with the brush pen. The brush pen's a little easier to get a soft. The brush tip is a little easier. And if I wasn't using cotton paper, this is like, I think, a high degree of cotton. And a lot of people who use Copic markers use special marker paper, which I think has a little bit of a, a sheen to it so that it absorbs less, maybe more, a little more like photo paper. But I don't want to buy special paper now just to use my special expensive markers than buy special expensive paper just for that. That's not, it's not really what I'm using it for anyway. So now let's move on to the um, Zig Kira Color Twin markers. And these work great in there. Now in this example, it doesn't, my videos have a tendency to go too long. So I'm trying to do things really quickly and not, not get sidetracked with, with too many examples. But you could pop this in and pop it out again, hold it in different directions to try to get less of a spattered effect. That's a little unusual. I don't know if that pen, I might have two of these uh, 315 Persian Blues. And um, so this one might be a little juicy or, or I might just need to readjust it a little bit. The nice thing about these square twin is the twin S is the one that fits in there. I think there's another pen called Curacolor Color Twin. And I don't know if it fits in there. You'll have to check that guy's uh, marker review. I think his name's Mark Tanacor or something like that. But I know the twin S are square like this and they fit in there. So you can see that's a pretty gosh darn dark color. So this is the 315 Persian Blue Zig Cura Color Twin S. And much cheaper than a much cheaper than a Copic marker. It's also refillable and I think the tips are replaceable. So now here I'm going to move on to a Sharpie and you will see that I cannot get it to spray no matter what. And I wish I had showed you a little more carefully that when you use some one of these pens that is not square or not a Copic marker, um, sometimes you can get them to work if you use either a foam dot or like one of these kind of kneadable architectural eraser or artist eraser that you can knead. They look like almost like a piece of gum. And then this is like some tacky sticky stuff for putting up posters and stuff temporarily that I used and I stuck it there so I could um, situate the pen against the uh, airflow but these sharpie markers something about the way they're shaped or the ink or something I just can't get it to um, every once in a while I can get a little spot or something but it's just not worth the effort especially when you can pop a big market in there so I think we can safely call the sharpie marker a great big no Okay, so now let's give this Bic Market a try. And as you can see, it's similarly shaped to the Sharpie, but I guess it has a longer nose on it or something. But somehow, I don't have to mess with it too much to get a really nice spray. That looks a lot like that Cura Color Persian Blue, if you ask me. This is a Bic Market, and I would call this a Keeper. So I quickly wanted to go over the websites I mentioned in this video. The first one is markersupply.com. You're going to go to Zig Cura Color Markers, then Zig Twin S Marker. And um, you will see that they have, okay, the price is about $3.28 at this time per marker, which is better than a Copic. They have a really good um, selection of colors. Look at all these colors. Nice. And you can order just the color that you want and their shipping is very quick and the price of shipping is very reasonable. You can use that little scratch and save coupon to save a little at checkout. The other website is um, wednesdaysheroes.com or frayedlogic.com. You'll find Mark Tanacor's um, marker review which is very comprehensive of all kinds of art markers and he talks about what markers fit into the airbrush system. Okay, here's Harbor Freight Tools, 
and I think it's harborfreight.com and you can go to air compressors and then um, you'll have to go through two more clicks to get to this page it's on the second page of the GP $64 um, air compressor and uh, there's a product video you can watch and be sure and read the reviews okay so thank you for watching and I hope you found this topic as exciting as it was to me thanks for taking the time to comment thumbs up or subscribe to my channel